Now, this aminoglycoside group of drug work on the 30S unit and 30S unit cannot properly read the messenger RNA and misreading lead to very abnormal protein synthesis or no or very reduced protein synthesis and that there is so severe disruption of protein synthesis that bacteria die and aminoglycosides are considered yes considered bactericidal other most of the antibiotics which work on the ribosomes other they are usually bacteriostatic yes. right bacteriostatic are those drugs those uh, drugs which inhibit the proliferation of bacteria but not necessarily killing the bacteria now most of the drugs which work on the 30s subunit or 50s subunit they are bacteriostatic but when we talk about an aminoglycoside, we say they are bacteriocidal because they severely inhibit number one when aminoglycoside bind over here, right? Then initiation complex is not formed. I will tell you initiation complex in two minutes. But first, 30s subunit aminoglycoside bind over there and they will lead to what problem? either termination of protein synthesis or very abnormal protein synthesis due to misreading of messenger RNA and that will lead eventually to death of bacteria and usually you know aminoglycosides are used in which group usually they are used for aerobic gram negative organisms infection aerobic gram negative bacilli are very very susceptible to aminoglycosides but remember aminoglycoside i'm writing here amino glycoside it's a big group right i remember it this is a a m we can make it big amine guy glycoside we can make it this g bigger right a mean guy why we call it mean guy number one if these 30s unit could talk it could tell you aminoglycosides are very mean of course for 30s subunit because the function is totally disrupted but doctor should know even this drug act as a mean guy for the patients that is why because it produces some very important and notable side effects. That is why before you give a aminoglycoside, you must know it's at least two side effects, two group of side effects. And if you are too good as a doctor, you must know at least three important side effects. As I told you, aminoglycoside is a mean guy. Why I call it mean guy? Because aminoglycosides, they produce Yes, as side effects, autotoxicity and nephrotoxicity. We can say this mean guy hit on the ear and kick on your what? Kidneys. And it may leave you paralyzed. Very mean. So it has three side effects, autotoxicity, nephrotoxicity and neuromuscular blockage. Even though it is rare, but serious side effect. It is rare, but serious side effect, neuromuscular blockage. In autotoxicity, autotoxicity is not car toxicity. It is your ear. More accurately, inner ear. So when we talk about that drug is autotoxic, it is damaging the inner ear function. Yes, it produces vestibular dysfunction. Aminoglycoside produces vestibular dysfunction or it produces cochlear dysfunction yes someone should be too smart to tell me everyone knows aminoglycoside produces autotoxicity and nephrotoxicity and some people know that rarely but very dangerously it can produce neuromuscular blockage and paralysis but some of you may might be knowing 
that when we talk about nephrotoxicity is usually reversible if you stop the drug early. Anyway, we come back to autotoxicity. Aminoglucoside produce autotoxicity. This autotoxicity is vestibular autotoxicity or cochlear autotoxicity. If it is vestibular, it will produce sort of diz dizziness, vertigo, vertigo or vertigo or dizziness. And if it is cochlear, it will produce deafness, right? So now it, my question to you is that aminoglycoside produce vestibular autotoxicity or they have capability to produce cochlear autotoxicity. Yes, yes, doctor. It produces uh, you guess it is it it produces deafness. You mean that aminoglycosides are mean enough to produce even what? Cochlear, cochlear toxicity. Yes. yes. Anyone else? Yes. Doctor in the red t-shirt. The lady in the with brown hair. Vestibular. You think vestibular. Okay. One doctor is saying it is cochlear toxicity. Other doctor is saying it is vestibular toxicity. Vestibular. And the lady with the brown hair. Yes. It produces cochlear. Actually, all of you are partially right and partially wrong because it can produce vestibular as well as cochlear toxicity. Of course, in some patient it may produce cochlear toxicity more than vestibular, and other it produces vestibular toxicity more than cochlear. But aminoglycosides are really aminoglycosides, a mean guy, right? because they are very mean even when they are after the ear they are going to produce autotoxicity not only they produce cochlear, cochlear toxicity they might also produce vestibular toxicity so they leave you in vertigo and without hearing something kidneys are not functioning well and you might be paralyzed very mean thing so should we use these drugs these are very these are very common names you have heard of can you tell me some aminoglycoside, gentamicin, tobramycin, streptomycin, amicamycin, neomycin, right? These are all aminoglycosides. Now, so usually we prefer to use them in relatively serious infections. And these days, these days, we really prefer that we only use when there are what uh, empirical empiric treatment for example you have taken the samples for culture right culture and sensitivity you have sent the samples to the lab, lab. and if you are suspecting due to clinical situation you are suspecting gram negative aerobic bacilli and if there are serious infections you can use aminoglycosides you can use the minoglycosides, right? Uh, you can start it until number one. When you use the minoglycosides, usually we don't use it alone. It is used in some combination, right? I will not talk about that combination right now. When we will discuss in detail minoglycosides or infections of the, yes, we will have some someday lecture on infections of how to de deal with the infections gram negative organisms especially gram negative aerobes but right now i will say aminoglycoside when we are using as an empiric therapy right and for dangerous infections we we usually use in combination because they they do not work on uh, for example anaerobic organisms and some other organisms but what i want you to remember when lab result come right and if sensitivities are, we have other than aminoglycoside, some other more safe drug to which the organisms are susceptible, please stop the aminoglycoside. Okay. For example, I again repeat it, it's worth repeating. If lab reports come and organisms are sensitive to aminoglycoside and, uh, and which you are already using, plus they are also sensitive to some other drug which is relatively more safe or less mean, less mean drug, more safe drug, you will replace it. So it was very important function of the 30th subunit 
that 30th subunit is involved in decoding the messenger RNA and it is involved in matching of codon on messenger RNA and anti-codon on transfer RNA. And yes, you have a question. Uh, 